Hi, welcome. You're watching FaceTime, CEO FaceTime. On today's show, we're talking about startup companies, specifically a competition, Seed Stars World 2014. Joining me today is Julian, who's an organizer from Seed Stars World 2014 and CEO of Galixo, Rafael Dana. Welcome to our show this morning. Well, thank you very much thank for having us. Well, can you share a bit more about your background and how you are actually part of the Seed Stars world? Maybe start with Julian first. Yeah, sure. So I'm one of the co-organizers of Seed Stars world at the global level. So together with Nelly Horn, uh, with my co-traveler currently in Singapore, uh, we're traveling around more than 30 different countries this year to organize pitching events and select the best startups from emerging markets. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. And Raphael, here? Yeah, so I'm the founder and CEO of Galixo. Uh, it's a boutique consultancy uh, helping startups and a fast-growing technology company uh, in the business uh, environment. And we're uh, based in Singapore, mm -hmm. so not, not that far. And uh, actually, we're a global sponsor of, uh, of Seedstars uh, because first, we, we love what they do. And we believe a lot on the, we say, the global ecosystem of startups mm -hmm. who's rising uh, all around the world. Mm -hmm. Well, the past few years, we heard a lot about startups being quite a big topic that's being discussed worldwide. How different is Seed Stars compared to the other s startup competition that's happening around the world? I think there are two main differences. The first of all is that we focus on emerging markets and fast growing startup scenes. So we don't go to the US or Western Europe where ecosystems are more mature. We go to places where things have been emerging for the past two to three years. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, we are investors. So we actually invest into the startups in the end. We don't just offer exposure or money prize or whatever. We offer actual equity investment at the end. And we're truly global. So we're going pretty much anywhere in the world where there is a startup scene. Mm -hmm. well, this is the first time that Seed Stars is actually doing the competition in Malaysia regionally. What was the decision to actually choose Malaysia as one of your locations? So I think last year uh, Seed Stars started with uh, 20 cities around the world. And I think uh, we've realized that there's many more uh, great ecosystem around the world. And it's clear that uh, Malaysia has been highlighted as one of the, those key uh, emerging markets. Mm -hmm. uh, especially that there's a lot of, of new incubators, uh, government money, uh, so for sure. And we saw right away there were some uh, great startups. And we're going to see that this afternoon, actually. Mm -hmm. And also, so we came to Singapore last year, and there were a few startups coming from Kuala Lumpur to pitch in Singapore. So we realized, mm -hmm. well, actually, let's go directly to Kuala Lumpur. It makes more sense as well. Mm -hmm. And Malaysia is aspiring to be the Silicon Valley of this region, yep. Southeast Asia. Yep. Well. It seems like Seed Stars has a different way of working. Can you share a bit more about how Seed Stars work in sure. general? Sure. Um, so there are two different parts of Seed Stars, and the Seed Stars, which is a venture builder. So we launch companies from scratch, invest a bit of money, and launch companies pretty much anywhere in the world. And then there is Seed Stars World, which is the Seed Stars, the, the startup competition that's traveling around the world to find the best investment opportunities um, in emerging markets. So that's we're divided into uh, two sides: uh, one which is about launching ventures from scratch, and one which is about investing into existing startups mm -hmm. uh, in emerging markets. Mm -hmm. And how does one apply for Seed Stars? So you need to get an invitation code. Uh, we are an exclusive uh, startup competition. Uh, we're not open to anyone. Mm -hmm. So if you work with one of our partners, usually the top accelerators like here, Mad Incubator, um, top accelerators, incubators, investors, communities of entrepreneurs we work with, they will give you an invitation code and you'll be able to apply. Uh, it's for us to ensure the quality of the applications we get into our pipeline. So we don't look at having 200 applications. We'd rather have a few and select from a good quality bunch of, of applications. Well, Raphael, your company is very passionate about the whole startup environment and also the spirit of startup companies that are growing a lot in Malaysia. What's your perspective of getting good quality participants for the Malaysian Seed Stars event? So I think uh, in general, uh, I don't even talk about Malaysia, uh, we're quite surprised on uh, the, the quality of startups all around the world. You would be surprised. I think one of the main d difference we're going to see with maybe Europe and the US is that you know in, in the startups world we're always asking this question, which problem do you solve? And I think the, the problem to solve in, a, in, a, in more like emerging markets is completely different than what you would do in the Europe and the US. And we'll see an, another type of innovation. Uh, so that's really interesting. And also I think there's something about the, the cultural aspect. Uh, you cannot clone uh, any startups and bring it anywhere all around the world. 
Uh, and now we see a lot of local concept and you need to adapt to the local culture and, and what like uh, the young generation and wants and uh, mm -hmm. that's the the main differentiator uh, ecosystem uh, we don't really talk about eco market uh, mm -hmm. i mean markets anymore we talk about ecosystems more and more mm -hmm. and i think southeast asia uh, it's really interesting i mean a lot of people in europe and in the us just talk about china but i think uh, southeast asia is uh, 650 million people mm -hmm. and it's growing really really fast mm -hmm. But when we talk about startups, a lot of and people actually associate it with it being coming from the technology side. The seed star just focus on startups in technology or also in other areas? We're quite open. Um, we look at both what we call lot, low tech, which is more like e-commerce, uh, kind of social network kind of things, and then high tech, which is like hardware. We have, of, of course, a lot more mm -hmm. few of those. Uh, but we're generally more, more, more tech. Uh, in we look at innovation. So we don't only look at startup. We look at innovation coming from emerging markets. So these could mm -hmm. be great investment opportunities for us, but there should also be great innovation to showcase from emerging markets and to bring to, bring to Europe as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're innovative, you're most, most likely in the, tech, uh, in the tech industry. Uh, and I would add that sometimes it's also about when technology solves a problem in an mm -hmm. existing industry. Yeah. So for example, I think a, a winner in Bangkok uh, it was like it was a laundry system, sure. but it was using a lot of technology. So at some point you could say, oh, but it's a laundry business. Yes, but it's completely solved by technology. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, th that, that's the mix. And I think everywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. Uber or Airbnb at the end, it's like some lodging or like some uh, car rental or like, but mm -hmm. it's all solved by, by technology. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it's interesting that we're going to have one in Kuala Lumpur this evening. But since this is a participation by invitation only, can you share a bit more what kind of participants are actually joining Seed Stars Malaysia this year? There's truly, a, there's a, uh, it's very diverse. It's a very diverse bunch. But I'd say there are two themes that are quite big here. It seems in, uh, you probably confirm uh, parking is mm -hmm. a big issue here in Malaysia. So yeah, I think we everyone have drives. <laughs> exactly, everyone drives and everyone is looking, where should I park, mm -hmm. uh, wherever I'm going? So we have a lot of parking apps, I think we're four of them. And then tenants, landlords kind of matching applications as well. Mm -hmm. But then we, we also have a lot of like, we, we also have some, uh, some innovation, like uh, I would say more like um, green and clean tech kind of, kind of technology as well that's coming to pitch uh, this afternoon. So it's very diverse actually, uh, mm -hmm. but very pragmatic at the same time. So, there are a bunch of what we call copycats, right? So mm -hmm. just copying what works in the market to here. There's no problem with that. Mm -hmm. uh, there are quite a few, few of those here. Mm -hmm. For your perspective, which one is, is the ones that are going to interest you today in this evening? Uh, as Julian said, we're looking to what solve local problem because that's mm -hmm. the most important. But I think what is also in interesting for us is to know who is able to scale at at the global level, yeah. uh, who is able to take uh, the concept uh, outside Malaysia or mm -hmm. any uh, country where, where we go. Uh, and also, I think the management team is also really important. I mm -hmm. think there's a lot of good ideas, but I think one of the big challenges in startups is uh, how good you are to execute this idea mm -hmm. and, make it, and make it happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's where. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned the word scale. It feels like a lot of startups, the whole reason why they're trying to raise funds is actually to ensure that they can scale upwards and also replicate, replicate what they do in their local countries to other countries globally. What's your perspective on this? That's exactly what we're looking at. So as to reflect on what Rafael was saying, we're looking at something that solve, a startup that solves a local problem. There was a good example coming from Kenya. So a winner in Nairobi was a startup called OK High. So mm -hmm. what the founder was doing is trying to solve a, a very basic problem is having an address. In mm -hmm. Kenya, there's no names for, s there's no street names, nothing. Wow. So it's very hard to locate where to actually deliver things or even if an emergency, an ambulance want to get mm -hmm. to your place, they can't because they don't know. Yeah. Uh, so the guy, the, the founder had been working on Google Maps for a long time at Google and he came up with this solution. So it solves a local problem for Kenya, but then he started to realize, wait, it's not the only place in the world where people don't have street names. Mm -hmm. The problem is also in parts of Asia, in parts of Latin America, and all across Africa. Mm -hmm. So then he's looking at a way to scale this business all around. And that we're really interested about because I think the value of c as well is a network. We're traveling to other countries around the world and we're connecting with the main players, the main investors, the main key players in this ecosystem. So the idea is that we can help him from Kenya to scale to other places. Mm -hmm. So these are typically the kind of idea that we like. Solving a local problem, but still thinking, hey, that could solve the same problem elsewhere in other markets. Mm -hmm. That's truly what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Well, 
that's interesting that you mentioned about they don't actually have a street address, but and by having a street address, there could actually be huge e-commerce potential there too. Yep. But one of the main things that a lot of people question is how do startups actually become profitable in after some time and not just waiting for funding to actually sustain their growth? So I think there's two two model uh, today. Uh, it's true that in Europe and uh, in Asia. A lot of venture capitals tend to, they want startups to, to become profitable quite fast. I think in the US, uh, the concern is more about getting market share. Mm -hmm. uh, so it depends how well you're funded. And also the, the big question is like, is your actual market profitable already or not? So maybe it's gonna become profitable in two to three years. People will be able to spend in your service. So maybe in the meantime, the, you, you, sh you shouldn't like spend too much energy on getting money and maybe you should spend energy on getting the market share. Because you see we have crazy eva evaluation now in companies, mm -hmm. and if you get uh, the critical mass on this market, uh, then you have a, a, a good potential exit. Mm -hmm. Well, the interesting part about seed stars, it's not just that you actually might have a chance of winning some money, but it's also about the exposure. What other things could actually participate benefit from joining seed stars world? Right, so we mentioned, well, funding, is one of the main ones that people mm -hmm. are looking at. I mean, when we mention half a million dollars, everyone is like, well, wow, we could get so much money. So that's one thing. There's visibility, and Galixo is a great partner for that in Asia because they help us to spread the word to the main media all around uh, Southeast Asia. Um, the other one is, I would say, is network. And that's actually the, the key one. Um, as I mentioned, we're traveling to more than 30 different countries. So if you're based in Malaysia, but you want to scale your business to Latin America or to other parts of Asia where you don't initially have a network, we have this network and we can help you. So also part of our job, or also part of what I'm doing every day is just introducing our founders. Once they join a network, they're part of our, I would say, the Seed Stars family. Mm -hmm. So they can email us anytime, 24 seven. And if they want an introduction to anyone in any other market because they want to scale there, we'll do those introductions and we'll help them to scale with our network. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's very hard nowadays to you know, reach out to different partners in, in different areas of the world. Mm -hmm. So since we're looking at businesses that can scale, eventually if we selected them, it means that they have a potential to scale. But we don't only want them to have the potential to scale, we'll help them to do so with the network we're building. Mm -hmm. So every place we travel to, we meet investors, accelerators, we try to meet absolutely everyone. And then we leverage those contacts to help all businesses to scale all around. Mm -hmm. So pretty much Seed Stars is not just um, a competition where you win funding, mm -hmm. but it's also about the whole networking of these companies. Well, Rafael, Galaxo, how do you actually do some of the helping with the networking for the Singapore contestants last year, for example? Uh, but I said, in general, Seed Stars happen to send me email a lot of the, uh, often uh, and tell me, oh, this company wants to come to Asia. Uh, can you help them? They're looking for some contacts. Uh, so I think we, we try to connect a lot of those companies. Uh, I think also we're uh, helping them even during the events. I mean, I spend a lot of time after the event in monitoring, even if it's a half an hour, an hour. A lot of people come to my office after and we discuss about uh, their business model. Uh, and I think sometimes it's, it's important to have the, the right advice and we, we connect them uh, with the right people. Mm -hmm. Well, you had something to add on? And also in the future, so what we're trying to build now, um, we've been around for almost two years now. The first year we didn't focus too much on it, but this year is a focus. It's our investors network. Mm -hmm. So whenever a winner comes to us, so he joins our network of startups. And so he, they join in a way our portfolio, even though we haven't yet invested into it. So we might invest into one or two or three of those startups, considering the size of our fund. But we believe that all of them deserve a chance to be funded. So what we do, we are meeting a lot of investors. I was meeting a lot of investors in Indonesia the other day. Um, we connect with those people, and eventually we try to find matching points mm -hmm. between those investors we meet and startups we've selected around the world. So we're talking to people like 500 Startups, which is raising a fund here, uh, a micro fund here in Indonesia. It's a fund from the Silicon Valley. Uh, we're talking with them and sending their where deal flow, just like good startups. Say, hey, have a look at them. And we can potentially make introductions to investors that might want to invest into your company. So if we don't invest, we always try to leverage a network mm -hmm. in a way or another to get you funded somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Can you share a bit more about what's the criteria that you actually look for for the next winner of Seed Stars World 2014? So at least in Malaysia. <laughs> at least Mal I mean, Malaysia and global would be the same, except yeah. that global, the competition would be very tough, yeah. obviously. Um, there are many different factors, I think. Rafael was mentioning the team, that's mm -hmm. very important. We look at characters, personalities, people that have a lot of experience and experience that fit with the challenges they're trying to solve. 
um, then you have a product already launched and at least have some kind of traction, have proven that customers are ready to buy and they understand the solution you're providing. Um, and I think proving that you can also make money, so having an actual business model. It's something that's been hard to find. We find great teams with great products, mm -hmm. and sometimes they just don't, we fail to understand how they make money. So if you have a great team, great product, and you know how to make money, well, you might, you might simply win this as well. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, on top, what is always really funny is that when we're judging, we have multiple parameters, scalability, market size. But the last question we ask is like, would I put some of my money in this company? And that's a bit like where we, that help us decide at the end mm -hmm. uh, who's going to be uh, the winner. And then it's always like we have a top three yeah. and then that's where we have, uh, we have all this rating. And then we we'll say like, maybe it's this one where we all we would all put money. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I would say that's my own statistics. Huh? I'm not talking for six mm -hmm. stars, but out of 20 companies, I would say that, I mean, uh, 20 ideas, there's 10 really good ideas and potentially there's three to five where you see a management team who's going to be able to execute this idea. Mm -hmm. uh, that's basically yep. um, the, 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 the small sta statistics I could do. And out of those three to five, uh, then you, th the last question is like, where would I put some of my money uh, right now? So pre pretty much in the end, it's all about the gut feel about whether you are willing to put your money into that company. Well, just a bit more, maybe you can share about the winner of Seed SARS Malaysia today would actually be going to Geneva for the final event. Can you share a bit more about the event that is going to happen this year? Yeah, so put in your agenda, everyone. Uh, this is February 4th till 6th, uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, we are hosted by the Lyft Conference, which is uh, one of the top innovation conferences in Europe. So we expect more than 1,200 people, investors, entrepreneurs coming from all over the world. Um, it'll be a one-day event. So first, the uh, startups, when they join, they will join a three-day boot camp in Lausanne, uh, mm -hmm. at one of the main technical schools in Lausanne. Uh, they will have three days to, be, to get their pitch ready, mentored by different mentors from all over around Europe. And then eventually, they come to the final day of the event when they pitch to investors. We have different workshops about different topics. So it's not just about pitching. We also want to have content about what it means to invest into emerging markets. So if you're an investor from here, it's a great thing to come to our event because we're about educating investors about what it is to invest in Latin America, in Africa, or in Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be a full day event, workshops, pitching, lots of fun, and meeting 34 of the best entrepreneurs in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, can you share a bit more about some of the past winners? What's their achievement since they've actually joined Seed Stars? Um, so the global statistic right now, we're following up really closely with our winners from 2013. So we had 20 winners in 2013, and to date, Altogether, they've raised $14 million of investment. Wow. Uh, not, not a, a, from us, eventually, and yeah. also from other investors. So I think that's quite, an, it's quite a very good number that mm -hmm. actually goes beyond what we expected. Um, I think a great success story is, of course, our winner from last year. So it started mm -hmm. from Asia, uh, Flito. It's a crowdsourcing translation platform based in South Korea. Mm -hmm. So when the founder pitched to us in South Korea last year, he had bootstrapped the whole startup. So he put his own money, maybe about thirty to forty thousand dollars, and that was the only investment he got. By the time he came to a final event, he raised three point eight million dollars from different VCs across Asia and the US, went to TechCrunch in Silicon Valley. I mean complete success story. Uh, now he's got more than three million users and he's extending to Europe also thanks to the network that we've put available to him. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably one of the big success stories we've had. Uh, also to mention a startup from Nigeria, we've invested into uh, a startup called Simple Pay, mm -hmm. which is aimed to be the, the PayPal for Africa. First for Nigeria, which is the biggest ma market in the continent, and then later for the whole of Africa. Um, it's, it's also doing really well. Uh, more and more customers are coming in. Uh, we've hired a new director for this startup. So they all, I mean, I could mention pretty much all of them individually. They're all great success stories, honestly. Mm -hmm. So pretty much you have like a, a huge number of really great startups happening mm. around the world last year. Well, Raphael, just for those companies, the startup companies in Malaysia that would be interested to join maybe star Seed Stars in 2015, how would they, what's the best approach for them to get the invitation? Well, I think it's, um, as, uh, as Julian said, we're working with a lot of uh, local accelerators and organizations. So I think they need mentoring uh, mm -hmm. because I think uh, any startups, uh, it's, there's a lot of good ideas, but always you need to reinvent yourself all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. I've been a serial entrepreneur and all the, the, the company I've created, from my original idea to the idea that worked, uh, in the middle, 
<laughs> there's a lot of change and you yeah. need to reinvent yourself and you need to listen. I would mm -hmm. say if there's one advice I, uh, I could give to all the startups, like listen to smart people around you and, and take back those, those ideas, think about it and see how you can uh, implement them uh, in, in your company and look for great mentors. Mm -hmm. And that's basically uh, how SeedStars World uh, is working. It's, it's a huge network of entrepreneurs and also of organization accelerators linked to your org organization. Mm -hmm. And now I think it's a, it's a global uh, ecosystem of st as a startup competition. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Raphael and Julian, for coming in to share thank about SeedStars World. And hopefully we'll actually get the winner out by this yep. weekend. Yeah. Uh, by the end of the day. By the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Well, well that's fantastic news. Well, right now we're going to take a quick commercial break. But if you want to find out more about business news in Malaysia, stay tuned with us on Capital Today.